these channels are also some tube like hollow structure which connects to Havertian canals. So these are the Voxman canal. So these transverse canals interconnects to Havertian canals and these are called Voxman's canals. In cartilage, we had seen that cartilage did not have blood vessels into the matter. But here in this case, they have rich blood supply. There are some protoplasmic projections from the cells which lead into the canal and it derives the nutrition from the blood. So the bone is vascular but the cartilage as we had seen was avascular. This is about the bone, the structure of the bone. Now let us see what is the matrix made up of. I have already told you that the matrix is made up of osine and the collagen fibers. What is responsible for the density of the bone? The density of the bone is because of calcium carbonate, calcium phosphate and chlorides of magnesium, potassium and sodium. So dear students, the density of the bone is because of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate and the chlorides of potassium, sodium and magnesium. And what is the function of bone? Bone forms the structural framework of the body and this gives support to the body. It is the one which is responsible for locomotion also with the help of the muscle. With the help of the muscle, the bone helps in locomotion. It maintains the posture and it puts up the most weight of the body. Now, an interesting fact. Which is the smallest bone in the body? It is states. The smallest bone is states, which is present in the ear. It is called states because it looks like the foot plate. So, this is the stape which is the smallest bone present in the body and it is present where? It is present in the ear. It is called ear ossicle also. This is about dense connective tissue. Dear students, till now we have learned about loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Next moving on to the third type of connective tissue that is fluid connective tissue. As of any other connective tissue, even this connective tissue, the blood, has got two components, matrix and cellular component. The matrix, in case of blood, we call it as plasma. And coming to cells, it has three types of cells, RBCs, WBCs and platelets.
This connective tissue has got plasma, the matrix and there are three cellular components RBC red blood cells, WBC the white blood cells and platelets. RBC are also called erythrocytes where erythro means red. WBC is also called leukocytes. Again, leuco means white. And platelets are also called thrombocytes. Let us now take up RBC in detail. RBC, red blood cells, as the name itself suggests, these cells are red in color. Why? How are they red in color? What is responsible for this red color? This RBC is red because of presence of a coloring pigment, a red coloring pigment called hemoglobin. So this RBC contains hemoglobin which is a coloring pigment. Also, this hemoglobin is responsible for the transport of oxygen and the carbon dioxide from various parts of the body to the lungs and from the lungs to the various parts of the body. This is about the hemoglobin. Next coming to the structure of RBC, it is biconcave when you see on one side and discoid shape when you see on other side. So the structure of RBC is a discoid but it is the surface is not convex but rather it is concave. So the structure of RBC is biconcave on the both side it is concave and if you see this surface it is round discoid in shape. So the shape of RBC is biconcave discoid shape. Dear students, blood count is an important factor which decides the health of an individual. Normally, an adult contains 4.5 to 5.5 million cells per millimeter cube. So in one millimeter cube of blood, there are about 4.5 to 5.5 million cells. This is about the count of RBC. Next coming to function, we have already discussed that it is the one which is responsible for the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Next, what is the lifespan of this RBCs? Once they are produced in the bone marrow, where is this bone marrow present? Inside the bone. So once this RBC is produced inside the bone and once they are released into the circulation, into the capillaries and the blood vessels, then it is expected to live for 100 to 120 days. Once they reach 100 to 120 days, the cell membrane of this RBC becomes fragile, weak, and as they move towards the small capillaries during squeezing, they die out or they break out and die. This is about the RBCs. Let us now learn about WBCs. Dear students, RBC we call them as RBC or red blood cells because of their color. But WBC, do we call them because of their white color? No, exactly wrong. These white blood cells doesn't have any color, they are colorless. WBCs are colorless. Actually, this is a misnomer. So, WBCs don't have any color. So based on the presence of granular sac-like structure which contains chemicals, based on the presence of these granules, we have classified WBCs or leukocytes into two categories, granular leukocytes and agranular leukocytes. What is the function of this leukocytes? Actually, we can regard these WBCs as 
soldiers of a body so they are the one which are responsible for the defense mechanism of the body whenever a microorganism attacks the body it will fight against that foreign body or threat now coming on to the third cellular component of the blood that is the platelets or thrombocytes again the term itself says that they are platelets that means that they are not the cells they are the fragments of a larger cell plate means is a plate circular structure and platelets means substructure or the part of or the fragment of the plate so these platelets are the fragment of larger cells what is the function of this before this what is the count of platelets in the blood 1 mm cube of blood contains about 2.5 lakh platelets and what is the function of these platelets the platelets are responsible for clotting mechanism dear students whenever there is a cut we know that the blood goes out but does all the blood in the body goes out no after certain time of about 1 to 2 minutes the blood flow automatically stops this is because because of clotting mechanism of platelets so this platelets forms a gate or it stops the flow of blood out of the capillaries so these platelets are the one which are responsible for the clotting of the blood and prevents the loss of blood during injury this is about the three cellular components of the blood and function of each of them dear students we have discussed about the blood in detail now moving on to the next fluid connected tissue that is the lymph again lymph is a fluid connected tissue that means it has the capacity to flow this capacity is because of what because of fluid nature of the matrix from where does this lymph come this lymph is derived from the capillaries from the capillaries the plasma and some of the cells move out of the capillaries into the intercellular spaces present in the tissues and this again this fluid again goes into some channels and these channels are called lymphatics so this lymph travels through capillaries called lymphatics or lymph capillaries or lymphatic capillaries and at certain points wbcs get differentiated they get equipped to fight against the foreign body or the microorganism and these organs are called lymph organs so lymph organs are the organs where the wbcs get differentiated to fight efficiently against any foreign bodies so the lymph nodes produces those cells which can in turn produce antibodies against various antigens this is about the lymph and hence this concludes the topic of connective tissues dear students till now we have discussed about connective tissue we had classified the connective tissue into three categories loose connective tissue dense connective tissue and of course the fluid connective tissue based on what based on the nature of the matrix and again talking about the loose connective tissue we had class we had three types of loose connective tissue areolar adipose and reticular we have talked about the nature of the matrix the fibers the cells location and the function of each of these components and also we have talked about tendons and ligaments also after this we have talked about dense connective tissue under dense connective tissue we have discussed about cartilage and bone and after this we have discussed about fluid connective tissue and the fluid connective tissue we have discussed about the blood and lymph in blood it's very important to remember the shape structure and function of cellular component of the blood so this is about the connective tissue 
Next, the fourth basic connective tissues of animals is nervous tissue. This nervous tissue is made up of neurons and neuroglial cells which are of course the supporting structures present in the nervous system. Talking about the neurons, neurons are the longest cells present in human body. So let us first know the structure, various parts of the neuron and function of each of them. Dear students, let us now learn about nerve cell or the neuron, its structure and the function of various components. This is a diagram of a nerve cell or the neuron. Probably this is the longest cell in the body. And a point to be noted here that nerve cell have no ability to divide. I repeat, probably the nerve cell have lost the capacity to divide. They have only the capacity to regenerate. That is why whenever there is any damage to a part of a brain, it's hardly that people recover from that damage. Coming to this diagram, this is a diagram of a neuron where you can see a cell body or the cyton with the nucleus. And this cell body has got many processes, many tree-like projections. Some short projections which are root-like are called dendrites. Among these processes, one process is the lengthiest and this is called axon. And this axon terminates in a root-like structures called telodendrites. Why is it called telodendrites? Dendrites means hair-like structure. Fine. But why is that this is called telodendrites? Dear students, you know the meaning of television, telescope or telephone where tele means a thing which is far away. Similarly, because the dendrites, the hair like projections are present away from the cyton or the cell body, this is called telodendrites. This means that the dendrites are present far away from the cyton.